Hey everybody, it's me Henry. Today we're gonna talk about the seven things successful people never say. Let's get started. Over 2,500 years ago, philosopher and poet Lao Tzu taught that our words become actions, which eventually become our destiny. In first century Greece, historian and essayist Plutarch declared that the speaker's state of mind, character, and disposition are exposed through their words. And Napoleon Hill, the 20th century father of personal success literature, asserts that words plant the seed of either success or failure in the mind of another. Across the planet, sages insist that words are important and should be chosen and spoken with care, for they are the most powerful drug used by mankind. As Rudyard Kipling once says, "Darling Price, president of Wellsafe Incorporation and the author of Wellsafe." Presentations and conversations that get results. If they are right, it stands to reason that what we say to ourselves and others plays a critical role in helping us achieve success. Regardless of how you may define success, words will help manifest that vision into reality. There are also words and phrases that can damage your self-image, mar your reputation, and jeopardize your success. Price says. To optimize your success, eliminate this language from your vocabulary and never speak it to yourself or another person. And here are the seven phrases successful people never say. Number one, I've no choice, or I had no choice. Successful people always see the options, regardless of the circumstances. Price say, to say we have no choice in a matter implies that we perceive ourselves as a victim, that we are less powerful than our environment. These weak words release a spirit of all responsibility. Successful people say, "I have a choice," and here are our options. Or let's imagine all the possibilities. They know that claiming and exercising the power to choose is the first step towards achieving their goals. She says. Number two, I should have or I could have. The words should, could, or ought imply regret, blame, finger pointing, and fault. Whether you say them to yourself or another person, successful people don't wallow in the past, and they rarely regret a decision or action. Says Price, even if it's deemed by a failure by others, they accept it as a learning experience that gets them one step closer to their goal. Similarly, they avoid "you should have" and "you could have." There's no quicker way to upset a boss, colleague. Or customer than to suggest that they are guilty of something, even if they are. Instead, take a collaborative approach. Say, "Please help me to understand why." Or next time, we will adopt an alternative approach. Number three, I can't do that, or that's impossible, or that can't be done. Not only are these words self-limiting, others perceive them as pessimistic, unconstructive, even defeatist. Achievers know there are countless roadblocks on the road to success, barriers they may stall or stump, but never stop them. They either remove the barrier or figure out a way to go over, under, or around it. The words "can't" or "impossible" rarely enter the minds of successful people. Instead of throwing in the towel, prices they speak in terms of alternative ways to get the work accomplished. What I can do is, I'm sure there's a way too. Instead of, let's try. As the great industrialist Henry Ford said, "Whether you think you can or think you can't, you are right." Number four, that's not my job, or I don't get paid enough for this, or that's not my problem. Successful people help others succeed. A billionaire Warren Buffett said, "Someone sitting in the shade today because someone planted a tree a long time ago." Think of planting trees as your job. Price say, if you ask to do something by a boss, coworker, or a customer, it's because it's important to them. Therefore, as a team player, goal number one is to figure out how to help them get it accomplished, even if it's not in the job description. By saying so, displays a career-limiting bad attitude. Even if your boss lays an unreasonable request on your desk. Reply politely by saying, "Sure, I'll be glad to help you accomplish that. Given my current task of A, B, and C, 
Which one of these would you like to place on back burner while I work on this new assignment? This response clearly communicates a prioritized workload, alongside a willing attitude to help. She says, "Number five, but we have always done it that way, or that's not the way we do it here." Successful people are passionate about innovation, finding a better way of doing something. In fact, Steve Jobs say innovation distinguishes between a leader and a follower. For this reason, effective managers value employees who demonstrate creative thinking, flexibility, and problem-solving skill. Price explains these phrases in one fell swoop reveal you are the opposite, stuck in the past, inflexible, and close-minded. She says, even if you disagree with someone's idea, say instead, "Wow, that's an interesting idea. How would that work?" Or that's a different approach. Let's discuss the pros and cons. Number six, it's not fair. She got the raise. You didn't. He was recognized. You weren't. That department is receiving funding. Yours isn't. Injustices happen on the job and in the world every day. She says successful people are proactive about issues versus reactive. Instead of complaining or whining, take action, document the facts, build a case, and present an intelligent argument to the person or group that can help you. Number seven, he's a jerk, or she's lazy, or my job stinks, or I hate this company. Successful people avoid words of judgment, insult, and negativity. Says Price. Regardless of your feelings or circumstances, avoid making unconstructive or judgmental statements that convey a negative attitude towards people or your job. If a genuine complaint or issue needs to be brought to someone's attention, do so with well-documented facts, tags, considerations, and neutrality. Nothing tanks a career faster than name-calling or mudslinging. She says. Not only does it reveal a juvenile immaturity, it's language that may be libel and fileable. Successful people choose words carefully to state observable facts and avoid disparaging language. That's all for the sharing for today. If you like this video and find values from this video, please consider to smash the subscribe button and turn on all the notifications so that you're not gonna miss out any videos just like this from this channel. And most importantly, leave your comments below. Let me know what you think. I would love to read your comment and reply to your comment. And I hope to see you in the next video.